inner wings they're up with steve the body who's currently painting them um and doing the full monty on those um uh, so i just thought oh, well, i better box in this uh this driver's side here little closing piece gone in there still nice and warm new lip for the uh the training edge of the uh inner wing to sit on joddled an edge onto the repair panel which has gone in and i'll show you that on the inside of the car in a second I then obviously seam welded it to the remains of the or the good remains of the bulkhead side panel and that's gone in right way around down here don't worry about too much about all this shit that's <laughs> quite a lot of stuff's gonna have to come off down here um i'm still working on what i'm going to do there but i wanted to get this on so here light upright here we can see the joddled edge and the weld so you can see a nice penetration all the way down there um, and that's a joddled edge. I'm not too bothered about that. I'll put some seam sealer over the joddled edge. It's on the inside um, and I've seamed it on the outside. I just make sure there's lots of kind of brushable seam sealer over those joints. So there's going to be less chance of moisture getting in there. When it comes to welding the bulkhead side in up here, I'm going to have to release all of this lock. So I'm going to have to take the bonnet cable out, which I've started to do. That should come out now. That should come out. Yes, it will. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. It's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. It's too nuts. Of course, there's two fucking nuts. I'll have a look at that in a minute. I'll get the mirror in there. But the bonnet release needs to come out because the loom runs down behind it. And I don't want any of these loom wires to be anywhere near where I'm going to be welding the inner wing onto the side up here. <clears throat> and as you can see, I've started to clean all this area up as well, uh, ready to paint it. There's no point me painting anything on this side until I finish the welding because I just don't want to be encouraging disasters. Well, that's good. I'm pleased with that. It's been a very productive, good couple of hours um, of getting that all sorted out, fabricated, lined up, cleaned, prepped, welded, um, and ready. Now we're on Firewatch, so I'm going to put the welder away. Someone asked me on one of the videos, what welder do I use? There we are, Oxford MIG Maker, 200 to 1. 200 amp welder um, i'm using it on its first settings here and kind of i flick between uh four five and six really um because it's synergetic i tend to get the wire feed how i want it and then just leave the wire feed alone so close this piece in here then before i close that in i want to work out what on earth is going to go on with this a post with the floor and with everything else that's going on here um, i started to let me go underneath i started to because this piece here let's get the lamp down here there we are started to percuss this piece this is kind of the floor brace um, and you can see it's in it's, it's in dire state it, it really is fucking awful um so really realistically i want to replace this piece i'm going to see if i can get it out um you can see where the under seal the original factory under seal is blown all the way along here um, and here it's particularly badly rusted, but that's only going to take the floor with it. So take that out, rebuild the outer sill, rebuild the A post onto the outer sill, put this brace back in again, and then make up the closing section on the floor on the inside. And I think we'll be okay. These bolts up here, by the way, these are um, for the front mud flaps, which are not on this vehicle. Um, so. I'll put a nut and bolt through there or a grommet through there. And I'll leave the holes in place. There's no point taking those out. Um, yes. And then we're going to start looking at shit like this. It's not pretty. What I'm going to do here is... <clears throat> I'll tell you now. Boy, I buy these kind of repair sections. It's just all folded up neatly and it comes in at not much more than the cost of the raw steel. So... Let me just get that roughly into place. I'll get that kind of roughly up there, mark down the edges, and uh, butt weld it together. And it'll come up to the end where it originally came up here. And then that needs to come out first because it's going to be easier getting that out now than it is afterwards. And all this is here to do is to support this edge of the floor. Now you might say, ah, oh, leave that, that'll be all right. Fucking look at it. Really? Would you leave that? I mean, while we're doing this corner, and I know this isn't a factory finish, by the way, I know this is not how it was when it left Load Lane a million, 29 years ago, but 
the mud trap that is created by having this flange run all the way down here with the bulkhead side and then spot welded because it's production makes spot welding a lot easier to spot weld the floor section onto the bulkhead side panel is what caused this lot to rot out in the first place um, so this is the way I do them so I do it on my car it's not the way I do them on the a suffix cars because I tend to replace the bulkhead side as well as the floor in this case I'm not replacing the bulkhead side because it's on the whole in pretty good order and then here we've got, wow, it's just all crunchy. It's going to be some fabrication going on here. But I think first and foremost, it's, it's going to be getting that sill boxed back in again. Um, I found the second patch, by the way, on this car. The first patch was on the rear cross member, if you remember rightly. The second patch is right there where my boot is. We're in the front footwell, driver's side, obviously got the pedal box and so forth, and all the relays that should be hanging on the inside edge here. Um, you've seen the work I've done already down here, done that just now, um, and then I started digging into the floor to work out what I'm going to do with all this shit. And the more I dig into it, I realise how crap these cars were when they were put together. So here we've got the traditional edge for the gearbox cover here. Tack weld, tack weld, tack weld, tack weld, tack weld. Here, the footwell on the bulkhead there was a tack weld there there was a tack weld there that was it that's all that was holding it in place and as I cut through those two tacks then the floor's loose so I'm kind of sort of heading down the route of as I can see a couple of spot welds up here taking this piece out or taking it off across here and then welding a new piece in butt welding uh, from side to side dealing with that mess over there I don't know yet but before I get even that far I started prodding at the sill so I know I needed to change this sill. Yes, I know. Oh, I know I needed to change this end of the sill. I didn't realise that the compromise was quite this far back. I mean, that's all come off with the, with the help of Mr. Tappy. So the inner sill, on the whole, is actually not too bad. It's the lower lip that's got problems. And the further back I go, the best the sill gets. However, there is... Let's see if I can get down there. It is a long way down, folks. Oh, my goodness. There is... A patch right there. Someone's welded a patch in. Or they've done something. Or there's sealant there. It might not be a patch actually. It's an original sill, I believe. Um, it's compromised here. You can see where the bottom of the B post. Um, and the B post is rotted through. Or the actual sill's probably rotted through and into the B post. You can get this as a repair panel. That's not really a problem. I suspect I'm going to find the drain holes completely bunged up. Oh yeah. So where I'm going with this now is I'm just going to run a cutting disc straight away along the out of, of the outer sill and I'm going to cut this section off here and then deal with the lip. If I'm finding that the bottom edge of the sill is fucked then I'll just cut the whole damn thing off, save me drilling. And I'm going to go from front to back on this because you can see there's a big dent on the sill there where someone's jacked it. I'm not quite sure what's gone on there so I'm, I'm inclined to take the entire outer sill off which is going to be my next trick. Because you can see here on the trailing edge of the B post, let's get the light over here. There we are. You can see that that has started to blow as well. well. That's the outer sill off. That's the corrosion we saw up against the B post. And this is the corrosion we saw up against the uh, the rear wheel arch section. Now on the inside of these sills, they're not bad. I mean, there's some localized corrosion and so forth here and there. And the remainder of the inner sill apart from that piece up there is actually I've been along with Mr. Tappy I've left the B post attached for the time being I don't want it I don't want it to move <laughs> in a nutshell <clears throat> I shall do that later on but even down here uh, there's a little bit gone around I've cut my finger over here a little bit around the rear body mount that needs welding that's not unusual so I'll just cut that section out weld a new piece of steel in there you can see it's gone there Little bit gone in with gone face. Uh, that's the air suspension pipe. Let go breather. I say air suspension intake pipe. Arch is okay. Closing piece of the wheel arch is okay. It's really just a little piece on the inner cell at the arse end and a big piece on the inner cell at the, at the leading end. So next really is going to be a case of drilling out all these spot wells for the remains of the outer sill along that bottom lip there. All of that return edge is now off. 
fairly easy just drilling the spot weld knock it off and then I'm left with a flat sheet of steel that I can fairly easily repair get the inner sill back up to its full strength and then put a outer sill repair section on um, and that'll be a YRMIT um, outer sill I must remember to remind myself that I disconnected the fuse for the air suspension <laughs> well, I'm panicking about why the air suspension won't work we're having a fun day I'll be honest um, so in order to do all this shit down here, and in order to get good access to it, I thought, well, I'll undo the eight bolts and get the pedal box out. That shouldn't be too difficult. The problem is, on these later cars, they've got this sound deadening panel here, which goes across the bulkhead, um, and it is pretty much the entire width of the bulkhead. Now, the problem I've got with this, as you remember, it is absolutely saturated with brake fluid. It's, it's minging. And every time I do anything, I'm covered in brake fluid. So I've got four of the bolts out, um, but I can't really access the top ones because all of this lot's in the way. Oh, for fuck's sake, why does a little job become a big job? <laughs> big job. <laughs> a big job. <laughs> right, okay, so long and short is I think I'm going to get the steering column, drop the steering column down. Give me access to the bolts. Um, I can get this down, sound deadening out. There's no point leaving it in there. It's absolutely saturated, as you see. So I'm gonna have to get it out um, and replace it with dynamite or something, I don't know. Well, that was an arse of a job. Um, really only because of the sheer amount of bloody brake fluid that was just dripping all over the place. Um, so obviously I had to take the steering column out. It just made life so much easier and I figured I was probably gonna have to take it out anyway to do these repairs down here and for the sake of a couple of bolts just take it out. It's not worth fucking around with. Um, then I cut all of the contaminated sound deadening out um, and that's really left me with a fairly empty footwell now which I can work with. So all of this lot here I can zip tight up and out of the way. <coughs> I can all go up there um, and then the loom on that side similarly. So, yeah, I can crack on with this now. Having spent an hour getting that pedal box out. An hour. An hour. Yes, folks, an hour. Fucking thing. Right, quick clear up. And then I'm going to, um, like I said, I'm going to drill spot weld. So I'm going to drill, get this piece out here. And I'm just going to replace that piece in its entirety. I know I've welded it on down there, but bollocks to it can't be asked. Well, we're getting there. Oh my god. So, <clears throat> what I've effectively done, let's get the light up here. What I've effectively done, oh my goodness, saw, um, is drill the spot welds along the top here. Some will plug, some will spot. Um, as you can see, there's one, two, three, well, so one, two, three, four, five, six along here, and then there's a seventh up there, eight, nine. Not a huge number of spots are there really. It's fairly easy to drill it out. Then I got to the closing panel for the sill. This is the piece that closes off the end of the sill. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Light. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. What the actual fuck? <laughs> um, however, we've now kind of got it back to a state of disassembly that I can actually start doing something with. So I can now see how the A post comes down, how the outer sill uh, kind of works up here. So I'm going to take this piece off here, rebuild the A post, uh, rebuild the outer sill. And then I can put things like the reinforcing plate and so forth in. This is the body mounting here. Now, it's rotted out on this face here. But not horrendously so. I can cut that out and I can weld in a new piece of steel there. Um, it doesn't need a complete inner sill. just needs localised welding. Because apart from this bit, the majority of the inner sill down here is actually in really good order. There's a tiny piece right at the back by my, by my Tootsie um, that's also gone. Um, but no real need to replace the entire inner sill. <clears throat> yeah, it's quite a bit of work getting that lot off there. Where is it? <laughs> and all those spot welds, and it still was rusty behind. 
to the arse. Um, right. And then for the floor, I've got the floor section, I've got the floor uh, support that went there. Then I've got the section of floor I chopped out, which is that piece there. Um, and I've got the closing panel as well. There's quite a few bits. I mean, most of this car seems to be on the floor now, it would seem. Um, it's not the case. Um, it's the bits that I've cut off really. Um, are, are to save time. So I think next thing I'm going to do is to tidy up all of this bottom of this A post, tidy up the sill, work out what needs to be replaced on the sill. So I'm probably inclined to make a cut about here and along horizontally right the way up to the body mounting um, and replace everything that's down from that. Uh, and then the rest of this I think is going to get cleaned up with the zip wheel, um, treat the rust and then put the new panel back over the outside, I think. There's a very loose cut along the outer sill here because I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. I will need to clean all this seam sealer off here because that stuff just loves welding, really does. And also you can see here it's all started to crack um, and it just started to rust again. So I'll get all that off with the zip wheel um, and uh, then we're almost at the point where we can start putting it back together again. That would be nice, wouldn't it? In other news... Um, Mr. Jones has painted, Steve the body this is, has painted the inner wings. I've got them back. Let's go have a look-see because it's still light outside at the moment. I've just got them in the container at the moment. Blue skies. Check them out. They look nice, don't they? Slam panels up there. They do look nice. Thank you, Steve. Beautiful job. Um, so really it's the case now of I need to get all this shit off here, remake the A-post down to the outer sill, remake the lower part of the bulkhead, then all that can be welded in and tight, then put the floors in. With me, closing panel of the sill. Uh, the other thing I noticed is these uh, brake lines are not that pretty. Oh, and that is some surface corrosion there. Oh, it's a bare line there. That looks copper, doesn't it? I think that is copper. Yeah, I can bend it. It's copper. That's copper. That's obviously been joined on as well, I'm guessing, then. Is there a joiner down there? Yes, there is. So it looks like what they've done is they've kept the original steel lines. They have done. So the front part is original steel. And the back part is copper. Oh, God's sake. What? Why? So let's have a quick look under here. Um, there they are. Yes, they're copper. So I'm inclined to replace these bits that go up to the bulkhead. That's easy enough. That's easy enough. Especially while the inner wing's off. Silly. Doing half a job. Anyway, it's just that I noticed that while I was in here. I mean, you, can, uh, you make your own mind up. So, um, and the problem I'm going to have here, welding this back in again, I'll plug weld along the top here. Uh, but you've got two fuel lines, fuel feed and return. You've got two brake lines. So I'm going to have to put a sheet of steel or something in there to protect it. Um, this edge along here, strictly speaking, should be seam welded, but... It's not a structural component, but it is obviously, you know, it's important that the floor doesn't flex. So along the top here, I can tag it or plug it these sort of distances um, and that'll be good. But um, when it comes to this edge, really, I want to be putting a seam in there and there and, and see what happens over here. But if I'm going to take these pipes off, that makes life a little bit easier. Yeah, I wonder why they did that then. That's just silly out piece of metal there, shard of metal. Um, right, I think we've got some more spot wells to drill out down here. Let's see what's going on. Um, get this inner section of the A post cut free and then butt weld in a new section. I didn't go for this approach on the on the passenger side and perhaps I should have done. Perhaps I should have done, but I was rather thinking, uh, do you know what, it's solid and there's a 
piece of trim that goes over the top of it but when it comes to this side there's so much that needs replacing in other news back doors off now um, so first and foremost let's start off with the coverage from whence we left so I was gonna oh hello coffee I was gonna just basically chop this back um, and chop the inside face of the a post back which I've done here but I hadn't realized these A-posts, they're double skinned. I didn't know when this when this came in. <clears throat> I don't suppose I've ever seen one that's <laughs> been in good enough shape to notice it was double skinned. But essentially what I've done here is I've drilled the spot welds down the face where I can see them. And then you've got the outer clam shell part of the uh, of, of the A-post. You've got the inner section, which I've probably thrown over here somewhere. Oh no, here it is on the floor. The inner section which looks like that and then <coughs> this lip is actually of course it's part of the bulkhead side panel so literally just chop that out and what I'm inclined to do is to actually just replace one single sheet across the whole of the inside once I know what's going on with it <coughs> then I cleaned as I told you all, all of the crap out of this channel here which on the whole is pretty good actually um, it just saves it all catching fire um, looking over here at this shambles then I thought well actually you know in there i mean that's the remains of the sill in there and it is rusty yeah it's not great is it so well let's get that out then so then the more i started digging at it the more kind of i needed to get the back door off um a few, few more bodges so <clears throat> i don't think that was ever really going to do anything it's probably why the interior lights aren't working <clears throat> um yes yeah, so that that flew out as soon as i opened the door wide enough that it could pop out um, this fella here, you can see the top layer there, that top layer there, that's the sill, the bottom layer is the B post, so I'm going to have to drill the spot welds around and about, separate the B post from the sill. I may even need to cut the bottom of the B post off in order to access the sill properly, um, and then sort of weld the B post back into position again. I've got all of these corner pieces still in place um, to locate the B post, so I'm fairly confident it's not going to shift. Um, and then I started looking at the w lower wheel arch, which <clears throat> it's not unusual to see them like this. Uh, but basically, the mud has got trapped up around here. Then I started digging a bit more into the body mount. Now, the body mount is it's, it's basically gone. It needs a body mount on the back of the sill here. Um, it's quite thick steel there. I think, well, why is that worse than anything else on the car? Why is that so bad, that rear body mount? Then I found patch number three. Dun, dun, dun. MOT patch of doom. Um, so there was probably a tiny hole here and a big old patch has been welded right over the top of it all. And when you start looking, yeah, it's been welded over the rust. <coughs> so it's carried on rusting behind. What we basically got here is, there's the original kind of outer arch. This, this arch here is just a huge, great big panel. So that's that bit. Then we've got the end of the sill weighted, welded onto it, which is just completely dissolved, as you can see. The outer sill has dissolved, nothing left. Then you've got the return edge. This is the return edge, this gap down here. That's the return edge for the for the body mounting. Um, and it's, it was all looking a bit kind of like someone had bashed it around in the first place. I mean, if I go and grab the section of sill that came from there, <clears throat> that bit there we are. that's the section of sill that came right for the very very back end and it's all stoved in now it could have been a rock that did that um but, or it could have been percussed i don't know but that was the outside edge um so what i was really looking at if i position this back in i've left my tripod at home folks sorry if i position this back in here it looked a little bit like that although the hole wasn't quite so large but when you dig in that bodge there has caused all this devastation here, I think. I suspect what happened was the heat from the welding took away, because it's, it, yeah, there's no coating on that at all. <clears throat> I think it took away the um, whatever coating on there. It looks like it's been on fire, doesn't it? So whoever welded that <clears throat> set fire to whatever coating was on the inside here, a nice wax surface, and then sort of left it to rust unfortunately that's what happens 29 year old car what do you expect so 
What am I going to do to fix this? Well, I'll talk to the customer first of all. How far do we want to push with this? Um, but really, that body mount needs doing. Oh, look, a chassis number. Uh, body mount needs doing. Um, spot weld there, I can see. I'm inclined really just to take this panel off here. Comes off down here. Spot welds are already drilled. Um, and that separates the arch then from this panel and then really just cut along here and down or right the way across and then the lower part of this arch can come away um, then I can see what's going on with the body mounting this it's not just a case of kind of putting a, a flat piece of steel back in there because the body mount is welded to the other side of this piece of steel here if we look at the front one it's probably the best way of explaining it let me go and have a look at the front one. So, <clears throat> so what we've got down here, get right on the floor, is we have got here a big kind of box section, huge great thing. Let's get the light onto it so you can actually see. So here, in the middle of all this, is a big platform. There's a hole through the top of it, and then the mounting sits either side of that hole. And this is triple skinned here, double skinned there, double skinned there. And there's one hole through the back of it. So I suspected when I kind of cut back the spot welds on this edge here um, that I will be able to salvage this front body mount. But the back one that you can see right up there is less pretty. And this is that reinforcing piece I was telling you about on the inside of the A-post. So I'm looking towards the outside of the A-post from the body mounting. Um, I've never noticed that before on any of the other cars. You can see there's a nice big, look at that. A folded section there where it kind of like I guess reinforces it traps dirt what do you reckon never noticed that yes I, I do think that uh, we don't we, we don't actually need a complete sill here um, it's all very good where it meets up to the floor but if the customer wants you to put a complete inner sill on it as well then um, so be it but by the time we kind of put two mounts on it, we might as well. But then it's a lot of bloody spot wells to drill. <coughs> so, oh my gosh! It's a long way up. So basically there'll be a line of spot wells hidden along here. Hidden along this surface here. All the way along. All the way along. Underneath the seat box, underneath there, right to the back of the car. It's a pain in the ass. Um, so I'm inclined to do a localised repair on the inner sill. Sort the back end out, sort the body mounts out and uh, put the outer sill back on God's teeth I don't know what to say really I really don't know what to say given the uh, diff casing a damn good clean out um, there's quite a lot of swarf in there believe it or not because of destroyed bearings and so forth a um, couple of little issues well no, no real issues uh, there's quite a lot of kind of loose rust and shit on it but 29 year old axle there's one hole down here on the damper mount, which I've drilled into a circle and I'm going to weld a plate over the top of it. Uh, drill it into a circle, there's no corners on it. Um, it's less likely to fracture. A la Liberty Ships, a la Comet Airliners, etc, etc. So I'll weld a plate over that in a minute. And then for differentials, let's grab Mr. Tripod while we're here. I finally remember to bring the tripod back in with me. Differentials. The um, used old stock diff arrived in from Paddock Spares this morning. Um, quite good, actually. It's nice. I'll give it a little bit of a clean out. Uh, I've gone over it. I just want to do a blueprint on it. I can do that. Let's just put the camera on the tripod. Boo! There we go. I've been over and given it a darn good clean. So there we go, just a little bit of engineer's glue on the leading face of each tooth, on the training edge of each tooth. We're there, crank it around, just roll that around. So I want to get that into the pinion gear. And what do we got? Right in the middle, from one side to the other and right in the middle from one side to the other uh, so nothing wrong with the mesh on that bearings feel okay on that i'm just gonna see if i can just feed any more 
this, because I've, I've given it a good, damn good deep cleanse, you see. So there was a little bit of dust and crap on it. Really going over, cleaning it all up. Now, the only oddity on this, space oddity, was that I counted the original crown wheel and the original uh, pinion. So, we've got here. Can you see? You can. Original crown wheel, 46 teeth. Original pinion, 13 teeth. Fantastic. So then I checked this one, 46, 13. Then I checked the sun gears on the original and the planet gears. Uh, and I got 14 and 9 on the old one and 15 and 10 on the new one. Now, I've got a feeling that the old one, the one, the one that's knackered, is uh, not from Range Rover. I think it's from a Disco 2 or Disco 3 or something. Because it's completely different and it hasn't got the shims and I'm not going to fuck around with it and it's there. I can't see that the um, pinion, sorry, the, the sun and crown brain is not working. Richard, put your fucking teeth in. I can't see that the sun and planet gears are going to cause any problems to the overall ratio. That's the crown and pinion that do that. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. Um, I then got my second spare 24 spline diff out, and that's exactly the same as the one that's been supplied to me, i.e. 10 sun, sorry, uh, 15 sun, 10 planet gears on this one. This one needs a really good clean. Um, I'm not inclined to go anywhere near that. I mean, that, that one's a refurbish, really. I'll just take that, strip that one down and rebuild it. This, this one over here, I just believe, is screwed. So, we've done the blueprint. Happy with that. That's basically working. The next thing I need to do is to get this oh, nose piece off. Now, these are a pain in the balls. I don't know who at Land Rover figured that this was a fantastic idea. But basically, what they do is they put, um, if I can, what I'll do, just get this. Let's put the arse end of the differential in the tray. Rest off the ground, there, you see? like that. <laughs> Take it around so you can see. Can you see? You can. Oops. Right. So you've got this nose extension piece in there. It's really to guide the prop shaft onto the uh, onto the flange. The um, and the, the, the problem is that. You've got to remove this piece in order to get to the big nut underneath and then access the full but once you've got the big nut off you can take this flange off and get the other one on now the other thing i did do by the way is i took the uh my brain work today i took the little lump um, seating uh washer things out for the abs sensors because i'm going to replace them and one of them was properly seized in in fact the abs sensor which was locked in was mega locked it's almost like it's been glued in it took quite a bit of punishment to get that out i mean that's fun now but uh, it wasn't going to get any less fucked by uh, not taking it out believe me okie dokie right now this needs to come off here some people have told me tap them some people have told me the heat Right, we're going to put the slide hammer on next. I've just brought over and put somewhere. Copy. Mmm. Yummy. So we'll put the slide hammer on there because that bolt goes in. I'll do that. Thread's gone a fair way in. Drop the slide hammer. Let's move you because I'm going to be bouncing this around on the bench in a minute. Go up here. Have a look. You might see. You should be able to see. Right, there we go. You don't want to bounce around on the bench.
might need to do is apply some heat to break. Because I'm led to believe that there's a, a lock, a thread lock in there. Now, worst case scenario is that the flange becomes sacrificial. I don't want to fuck up the, uh, the innards if you get the drift. So I can cut it off, I'll have to cut it off up here. If I cut it off, then I'm going to lose the threaded hole. Which would be particularly useless. things out. Busted. Um, right, now in here I should have a girt big nut. I have got a girt big nut. So I want impact wrench next. And uh, I should have to get that off. Yeah, so a half decent slide hammer, a bit of heat and an 8mm M8 bolts, they do come off. And yes, it was thread locked. So I've got this uh, gloop all the way around it. It's still very warm. That can come off there. Slide hammer box, thank you, slide hammer. Marvelous job. Marvelous job indeed. Right, it's going to get the impact wrench next. We'll get that big nut off. Come back down here for that. Okay, let's get this nut off. Uh, so I'm using a 24mm. Still warm. <laughs> Wonder why. That's off. There should be a girt big fat washer underneath there as well. Um, this then comes straight off. Nice. There we are. One three spoke flange intact. One four spoke flange. Just want to check it fits on there. It does. So all I really need to do now. Um, I just wanted to double check the, no, I don't think it is. So, so the actual pinion, that's the end of the pinion there, appears to be the same length. So I've got the other one behind the camera here. It appears to be the same length. So that was uh, quite easy really at the end of it, wasn't it? <laughs> 